back to the Woolwich Road flyover on the A102. And in central London, there is a lane closed on the A4 around Trafalgar Square roundabout because of a gas leak, and that's causing uh, long delays on all approaches. Delays of over an hour on the surrounding routes. Lindsay Hipgrave, Five Live Travel. That was amazing. That was John Coleshaw doing that, but they probably don't realise at home. No, they don't. That was amazing. That's his best one ever. And he's le- he learned that impression in 45 minutes. That is amazing. Uh, incredible. A triumph. The house grinds to a standstill when Six Nations is on. The rivalry between, you know, all the different nationalities. The fact that you're against home nations. For the love of rugby. We love going to all the matches together as a family. The Six Nations continues this weekend on the BBC. Watch the matches in a bar and the atmosphere is just electric. It's good for everyone to get together and support the one country. Exclusive live coverage of Italy versus France, Wales versus Ireland and England versus Scotland. Continues Saturday afternoon at 2 30 on radio 5 live and across the bbc so it's 10 to 3 peter fincham on the way the head of itv ricky gervais is here at the moment and the second series of the ricky gervais show starts soon on e4 it does peter fincham um probably uh gave my first real job what was television. that well he was the uh, head of um uh, the company that made the 11 o'clock show which was uh talkback productions absolutely and then um he also did my uh ricky gervais meets so he should be ashamed of himself. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people want a word with him. There was a Ben Ricky Gervais meets. It was absolutely hilarious. I actually watched back recently. Of course, was they're all dead so- now. All the guests are dead. <laughs> Who was on there? Are there well, um, we had two guests a week, and the combined age was always nearly two hundred. <laughs> 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 no, you did a little sketch in that. I think it was to do with Family Fortunes. Did you do oh, a Family Fortunes style I, survey? I went out on the street. That was 11 o'clock, show. Oh, it might have been there, yeah. And I went out and um, said that I was a researcher for Family Fortunes. And they all asked it. And I just answered, asked them the most ridiculous questions. Like, what's the biggest animal you could kick to death? That was it. And they all just, they just say, oh, I don't know, probably <laughs> a, a donkey. <laughs> just, just, like, that would be a question. <laughs> on Family Fortunes with Les Dennis asking that <laughs> and just they got more and more horrendous and, and but they just straight the way down the line just asked uh, answered it it's really worth looking at I think you can find it quite easily on YouTube well we'll bring uh, Peter Fincham in a bit later before you oh go. is he here he, live he's coming in live in about 25 minutes wow you can say thank you for the, jo- the job on the 11 o'clock show I wonder if he still wears only the finest silks and ermines that's what he used to have swan round in. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, how did you get the job on the 11 o'clock show? I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> it just, it just happened. I, I always wonder how I got any job. Mm-hmm. Um, they heard me on XFM. I, I just, uh, uh, my first um, even, you know, uh, brush with um, entertainment was um, just popping up on XFM in about 1997. I'd left the job in the office, which I based the office on. I worked in an office for like seven years. and then uh, um, The actual XFM office? Uh, no, no. Yes. Before that, I worked in an office okay. um, before that. And then I got a job in XFM. Again, I was, you know, it was an office job, but I started popping up on air. Um, I was meant to help out the DJs and write stuff for them. And then I start, I found it was quicker to do it myself. And then one of the researchers uh, heard me and gave me an audition um, for the 11 o'clock show. And, uh, and that's, that's where it all started. So luck again, sort of drifting into it and then thinking, oh, this is a good, this is a good life. This yeah. is easy. Um, so yeah, I, I sort of um, stuck with it. You, what was the persona you did on the 11 o'clock show? I played a sort of um, uh, a, a bigoted... Um, sort of a, a non-reconstructed sort of bore, a pub bore who, who always came down on the wrong side. I sort of kept it slightly for my persona stand-up so you can say the wrong things. So he's a brasher, confident. Those guys in the pub that say, I'd say I'd have sort out Northern Ireland. <laughs> and they go, nurses, don't make me laugh. Uh, so it was that sort, of, that sort of character. The bloke, like, reading a tabloid and going, what they should do is... Um, you know, that you know that sort of thing. Uh, you don't just get those people in the pub, you get them everywhere. And of no, course, you, they're everywhere. Everyone's got an opinion on how to solve the Everyone world. knows how to sort out Libya. Absolute, you go to any everyone, dinner party, it'll be uh, solved during of course, dessert. Of course, Well, uh, we, we, m- myself, Steve and Carl have just done a, a, a special um, podcast for um, Comic Relief. It's free. You can download it at rickyjavase.com. It's free. I'm not... It's free. Um, <laughs> and uh, in that, Carl talks about um, solving hunger. Um, and uh, it's quite remarkable. It's quite remarkable. It's, it's a rickygervais.com, a special uh, comic relief podcast. And it was uh, obviously at XFM where you met uh, Carl. Uh, yeah. 
and uh, it's these pod, the podcast they they became a show on XFM, then the podcast, and so now the podcasts have become this animation, That's which right, is on yeah. on HBO and uh, and E4 and Channel Four over here. But it's it's brilliant. The actual animation is great. It's got better it? and better as well. Now they've sort of um um they've really moved on directorially, and it really adds to it. Now we were worried when we first came to it because um you know that we've had like two hundred eighty five million downloads, so we didn't want to ruin it for people. And I was very conscious of like don't try and add to the comedy. It's a very delicate what kind says is you know and um and uh now they really get it and this second series is is so much better than the first um the first the first episode um is uh Carl pitching his film idea to a film company it's, and you I've get to it. see the movie I've it's, seen it oh you saw it I've it's, seen it's, it's great isn't it it's it really, really good is, they've done such a good, great job what's quite nice is uh, so Carl when you were making these podcasts you obviously didn't know they were going to be turning these animations so no well, got... no, did we, no, none of us did of course I mean, we didn't even think many people would hear them we did it for a laugh you know um, and what's nice even if Carl now hits his head and suddenly becomes clever he exists in this bubble this little time bubble it, we, we've got essential Carl forever it's, he's you know he's now doc Documented. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's this little iconic cartoon character, and um, uh, it's the favourite thing I do. With is it really? With is everything it? else, you know, I'm, I couldn't be prouder of, you know, working with Steve, the Office, and extras, and you know, all those great fun things you do. But there's nothing as much fun for me as sitting in a room with Carl, just chatting. Knowing that the world is going to hear this, he's totally unaware. It's like he still hasn't learned. He he was moaning. He did a press conference, right? He was moaning that he said when well, I did these, right? I didn't realise it was made into a cartoon, and I'm talking about me Auntie Nora farting and stuff, and now she's watching telly. You know, so he didn't think that this would come back and haunt him, <laughs> and yet he still does them. So it's just, it's just so sweet that he exists in this little cocoon. Uh, well, last time you were on, we rang him up, didn't we? Should we do it again? Yeah, if you like, yeah. yeah. I've got my phone with me. Well, we'll call him. I've got his number. Well, let's ring him just after three. Let's okay. Give him a shout. He, was doing, he was doing some DIY, and then I called him again because you kindly let us announce the second series of An Idiot Abroad. And he didn't know what was going on, did he? He was doing more DIY, I think. But he, yeah. didn't, he said that I read out the press, the official Sky press release mm. that he thought you'd invented. I know. No, but, it, but th this is it. He and yet, if he reads something about a, a, a chimp who can talk French, he <laughs> believes that. <laughs> He didn't believe that he'd got a new show. <laughs> well, this idea of this idea of his for a film, uh, which is in the first episode of the Ricky Gervais show on yeah. E4, and his idea is he read that you only use half your brain capacity. Yeah. So uh, a husband dies, yeah. but he's sort of played like, played by Clive Warren. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. An actor. The, yeah. He means Clive Owen, doesn't it? And yeah. So it, you get just just before this guy dies after an accident, they get half his brain and, and stick it in his wife's head. So, so let's take half of hers away. Yeah. Throw that in the bin. <laughs> right. And now she exists with this. With you know, I said, why would you do that? Because he loves her. So now this woman's going round having arguments about what cereal to eat with her dead husband. I mean, it's ludicrous. And then she starts fancying women. Yeah. Uh, just, just ludicrous. It's ludicrous. You say it's ludicrous. It's not that far removed from a Roald Dahl, film, a Roald Dahl short story. Well, he always gets you, but he always gets you. I, I can be getting so angry with him, and then he say something, and I think that's a good idea. That's a good <laughs> idea. Or I read something, and I go, oh god, he was sort of right. He was sort of right, but he sort of reads the headlines and extrapolates. Let's have a um, listen to a little clip. This is from the program, the first episode on E4, uh, and this is Stephen Merchant reading from Carl's diary. Box jellyfish, crocodiles, snakes, blue ring octopus, red black spiders, funnel web spiders, great white sharks. Just some of the reasons that put me off going to Australia. <laughs> Every creature is bigger and angrier than anywhere else on the world. <laughs> I put it down to two things. One, it could either be because spiders and snakes and the like normally hide under rocks. The earth is one big rock. Australia's at the bottom of the big rock and they're trying to hide under it. Oh, you are it? a maniac! You're just thinking about it, thinking about where spiders go and that, and that works, doesn't it? No! Why doesn't that work like Because there's rock? no real upside down and bottom of the earth, is it? It's all relative to what? It's relative to what? A map that you well, saw. Well, it's a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah, two things there. Uh, you, you often call him an original thinker. He's right? amazing. That's sort of an original thought. He's amazing. Uh, but your point there about there isn't an, a top and bottom of the earth yeah. is, of course, true. Of course. I'm not sure how many people really realise that, that it's just a globe in space, it isn't, there isn't a bottom. Of course there's not, there's no the, top and bottom, you know, but we, uh, the centre of the world is you, so we think that we're here and 
the people are either downstairs in Australia or upstairs on the North Pole. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but they must really know that if you're in Australia, you're not hiding under the big rock we call Earth. <laughs> they must have. They must know that, mustn't they? <laughs> but.